Yo, tap in, tap in. What's happening, man? We're the Williams family. It's another um, it's another day, another morning. Thank God for waking us up. Have a good breath in our body, and yes. and let us be able to be free. You know what I'm saying? Free. And you know, like I was talking to her last night, right? The police pulled me over. You get what I'm saying? Let's start by saying that, but. I used to be nervous with the police back in the day because I was in the streets, you know what I'm saying? But when they pulled me over last night, I was just calm and I felt peace. And ain't nothing like having your peace, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, like, with with, with the police and everything, us, us co- I ain't going to say color people because they lock Black everybody. folks. We're, they lock everybody up, you know what I'm saying? But what I'm saying is a lot of the so guys. mostly target. Yeah, we won't. Exactly. But listen. A lot of what a lot of ways got mental health. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And really why we got mental health cause when you ride this thing about you riding, right? Mm-hmm. And the police jump behind that. What the first thing we're gonna be doing? We're gonna be stopping on brakes, we're yeah. gonna be looking back, we're gonna be doing all this, you get what I'm saying? Throwing our phone to the floor. And and, and, and being honest, you don't really supposed to be like that with police because they're supposed to be able to protect the community, right? So I got pulled yeah, over. Yeah, but with so many, um, what do you call it? So many past incidents between black people and police. It's just like now it's like a normal but response to be fidgety and scared and, you know, get a, a certain panic attack or a case of anxiety. But, you know, the police, they, 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 they grind me, they shots the too. You know what I'm saying? You got good cops, you got bad cops, you know what I'm saying? But you can't look at one and say, oh, that's a good one, that's a bad one. So uh-huh. it's just like a, a natural response for us to get fidgety and, and all that good stuff. So I'm glad that you overcame that aspect of it in the sense of you didn't have to feel fearful feel, and they, and fearful was, or scared. And there were two police, so they could have searched the car and everything, you feel me? But I, went, I, I was cool, you know what I'm saying? And like... I believe I believe in the most high, you know what I'm saying? So once you got peace with God give you peace, you should, you can't be feel nothing. Nothing, you know what I'm saying? At all. So, you know, um we, we wanna come back we wanna come over here this morning and um uh, and speak on like building yourself, you know what I'm saying? And what it take to build yourself. Um mm-hmm. these last past year or so me and her been working hard on like investing into ourselves. Cause mm-hmm. you gotta understand, like throughout the years, we did for a lot of people, we gave to a lot of people, we took care of a lot of people. But when it was time for us to 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 get comfort, we didn't ever get. You know what I'm saying? People looked off when it came to us. You know what I'm saying? People didn't they they didn't, didn't do for it like we did for them. You know what I'm saying? So we had to come to an understanding, like we got to do more for ourselves than we do for others. You know what I'm saying? It sounds crazy, but it's true. You know what I'm saying? You gotta love yourself. If you ain't happy, how you how else you gonna make somebody else happy? You know what I'm saying? If you ain't taking care, of, how you gonna take care of somebody else? Cause at the end of the day, not saying uh, you gotta be selfish because it seems like that's what he's saying. But what he really is saying, just to clarify for those that don't understand, is that. You cannot pour from an empty cup. If you had, if you say, you know what, can you fix me some water? Or can I have some of your water? If you reach over there and get your cup and your cup empty, what are you going to pour into my cup? Nothing, right? So what he said is you can't continue to pour out to people to where your cup become empty and you have nothing left for yourself. The Bible says um, your cup runneth over, meaning that all that extra outside that cup is what you give away. But what's left on the inside of the cup, you keep for you. And and, 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 and then I was thinking about when she was talking like, if you pour all, if you pour all, let's say you pour all your Kool-Aid in somebody else's cup, now your cup dry, now you thirsty. You get what I'm saying? If you think about it, you ain't got nothing now. Because right. you gave it all away, you know what I'm saying? And then if you reach back to them and say, hey, I just pulled you on my last Kool-Aid. Can can I have some Kool-Aid? Because I'm thirsty. They're going to look at you and walk off. Yeah, like. Because uh, you just supplied yeah. their need. Yeah. 
Yeah. They didn't care about your need. Yeah. Yeah. So say something for you. Don't empty out yourself to where you have nothing left for you. You yeah. can't comfort nobody if you ain't comfort. You can't help nobody be happy if you ain't happy. You can't help nobody succeed or be successful if you haven't even succeeded and been successful yourself. I can't teach you something that I ain't done. Yeah. You can't teach me something you ain't done. That's just like me being in the medical field. He can't come teach me nothing about the medical field if he never worked in the field. So your experiences make room for you. Your experiences teach you. Your experiences not only help you, but it help others because your cup is filling up. As you do and learn in life, you fill in your cup. God is filling your cup. But as it starts to fill, fill, fill and get to the rim and start pouring out, then God use you to pour out. But if your cup is way down low or you only got a drop left, baby, you say that drop for you. Yeah, because and you got to understand, like, in, okay, I can say 90% of people in our family, that's who we having a problem with, you know what I'm saying, family members. And especially when they feel like you you trying to do something, you trying to break the curse in the family or you trying to build yourself. Family, sometimes family can be very, very entitled, you know what I'm saying? And they, and they can be your worst enemy too, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and you know, like, I, I always thought about it like, because my mama got nine kids, you know what I'm saying? I always thought about it like each and every one of us could come together and bring something to the table and we could have some big, you know what I'm saying? But you got to understand if two people thinking like that and the other seven ain't thinking like that, some ain't, some ain't going to go right. You get what I'm saying? Because it take one person to mess up something, you know what I'm saying? So, we, we, we like, we give, God say give, you know what I'm saying? But God didn't say be a fool. You get what I'm saying? And a lot of it, we make, we make fool out of ourselves, you know what I'm saying? Because we, we so busy trying to rich and do for others, you know what I'm saying? And we and go back to the same thing. And baby, if you ain't got it to give, that's okay. Don't let nobody make you feel bad for not having it to give. Yep. It's okay if you don't have it to give. God didn't give you that assignment. Just know your assignment. And everything you do in life, you got to understand it's an assignment. Man. Some God is trying to show you something, teach you something, tell you something, whatever it is that he's trying to do, but it's an assignment. And if you don't have it, that's not your assignment in that season. Yep. God going to bless you with it. So when you do reach that season of giving or that assignment of giving, you will be able to give. Yep. But I need you guys to understand your assignment. I need you to understand that God gives and God takes us away. Okay. If you don't have it now, don't let nobody make you feel bad. If yeah. you do have it and you ain't got enough to give, don't let nobody make you feel yeah. bad. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Because you got to understand, right. baby, this is your season. This is your season of elevation. This is your season to, to break generational cycle. God said, I am breaking the curse starting with you. Right. So you got to understand, tap into yourself and know that the curse is being broken off your life. You breaking generational cycle. You were the chosen one. Don't let nobody make you feel bad for being chosen. Because what God is doing, baby, they'll never understand. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. Okay. They got comfortable with you. They got comfortable where you are. They know you, but they don't know you because they're not your creator. And, so and, remember that. And you know what we mess up at? I think what we doing for people, we try, we, we try to be God. You get what I'm saying? God say help people. He didn't say try to be me. And, and a lot of times we try to come through with everybody. Every time somebody call it, we try to break out there to go through it. You know what I'm saying? Instead of saying, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give their situation to God. You get what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Then, once you don't give to them people no more, you ain't nothing to them no more. You know what I'm saying? You ain't nothing. They're like they don't even know you. You get what I'm saying? But sometimes, you got to look yourself in the mirror and tell yourself, I messed up in that situation because I was trying to play God hand. You know what I'm saying? Right. Instead right. of kicking it real with a person like, okay, why don't you, why don't you try to do this? Or let me give you this number to this job or such and such and such. You trying to save the day. And trying to save the day, you don't hurt yourself. You don't hurt your kid. You don't hurt your husband, your wife. You know what I'm saying? You don't hurt everybody. Baby, let God be God. 
let him do what you can't and you do what you can because as soon as you tell somebody no they take your name and run it in the mud everybody oh, talking about you yep. she ain't never there he ain't never there yeah, yeah. you can't go i don't know why you call them don't call them for nothing because they ain't gonna they ain't never gonna help you yeah. they ain't got this and they ain't got that yeah. as if you never said yes before yeah. Yeah. but that's okay let them folks talk let them talk why because they gonna watch you elevate because they don't got so comfortable with you giving or they don't got so comfortable with you not giving that they don't even know you for who you really are. All they know is what you can do. Yep. So you allow God to use you in this season and allow him to show you and give you understanding of your assignment. Understanding. Because when yep. they see you again, they're going to be like, what? How she, how he, what, well, I didn't know. I thought that yet yeah, you thought, yeah. but God knew. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Facts, right there. Though. They ain't even gonna be able to get the words out their mouth because they so familiar with you. Yeah. Oh, well, she always never had, and he always didn't have. Yeah. And what? I mean, this is how they living, and oh, they driving that type of car. Oh, well, they always didn't have. So I thought they was driving. Keep thinking. Yeah. Keep sleeping. Because while you over there thinking and sleeping, God is over here doing something amazing. So mm -hmm. you you continue to break your generational curses. You mm -hmm. continue to allow God to use you. And you continue to sit there and do what God told you to do in your assignment. Don't worry about who don't understand. Because yeah. they ain't going to never understand. Because it didn't come from them. Mm -hmm. And you get out your way and stop playing God. Yep. Yeah. That, that's what it is. You know that's what, what it is. You know what I'm saying? And, and we, 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 like, we only speak on stuff that we've been through. We ain't I ain't gonna, no preacher, but don't make me preach yeah, to you. Hey, and we, we ain't gonna get on here and talk about that we ain't been through. You know what I'm saying? You know, and, and that's why we drop these books. We put our life inside a book so it can help people that need it. You know what I'm saying? Grief, anger, and further woman, overcoming, overcoming the impossible. Possible. And so, I can tell y'all that from experience like he said because at one point in my life I, I i wasn't trying to be god but i started doing things as if i was god like mm -hmm. i took life into my own hands and yeah. i don't mean my life particularly and i guess you really could say it was my life because mm -hmm. dealing with polycystic ovarian syndrome it caused a lot of other symptoms and troubles and health conditions that i was just tired of dealing with and I told the doctors because they said um, at the age of 25, I'll never be a mother. I'll never have kids. And I said, well, you know, I'm tired of dealing with this, tired of dealing with that. And the only option they gave me after I went through so many surgeries and all this and that was, there's nothing else we can do for you. All you can do is have a hysterectomy. But, you you know, if you still want to be a mother and all that good stuff, you can adopt, you can do this, and you can do that. And they after they done tried all that with your body. Stuff, right. Yeah. And I said, so I said, let me think about it or whatever. And I said, no, because I really want to be a mother. And I went on about my business, but because of the, the things and troubles that come with it, I got tired of fighting. I got tired of being on that battlefield, right? right. So I decided to take life in my own hands. And I called the doctor and said, hey, let's do it. I don't went and got a second opinion and everything. And I even told that doctor, let's do it. Right. Then go back to the first doctor, told the second doctor, let's do it. Right, let's do it. And um, so I'm getting ready. Scheduled for the hysterectomy and, you know, getting ready for pre-op and all that good stuff. And one night at work, I worked in the children's hospital and I got kicked in the stomach by one of the babies um, that I was trying to put an IV in. And so, you know, I went home, told my husband, whatever, didn't think no more of it. And then the next day uh, or later on that night, I started having back pain. So we ended up in the ER, long story short. We ended up in the ER while I'm ske scheduled for pre-op now. And I found out I was pregnant. And right then and there, the doctor told, the doctor said, whoever told you you could have a baby, you need to call them back. And if you're scheduled, still scheduled for that surgery, you definitely need to cancel that because you ain't going in the surgery. Right. You, congratulations, you finna be a mother. So I'm trying to tell you, don't take metal in your own hands as if you God. Give it to Jesus because he literally had to intervene because if he had to intervene, I would have took away the whole process that he was trying to do in me. 
If he hadn't intervened, I wouldn't have the five-year-old that I have now. So sometimes we get in the way of God and we move faster than him. And then sometimes he got to come back and correct bring, our mistakes. Bring you back. Bring you back. Yep. He got to take, take us before we jump off the ledge. And one thing I learned, and two things for sure, God always got a ram in the bush. Okay. So don't take matters in your own hands. Pray about it. Take it to God. And Meditate. And don't be trying to play God's hands. You, you know what I'm saying? You never know what he got in store. Never please. know. You and know just know your ways are not his ways. Your thinking is not his thinking. So make sure whatever decision you make on today, that it was the decision that God gave you to make. It is not from your own fleshly, earthly desire. You got to change the way you see things. Change the way you hear things. That's why you got two eyes. I mean, two eyes and two ears and one mouth. Because you got to see and hear more than you speak. Yeah. Never talk too much. Give yourself away. You know what I'm saying? When y'all tap in, you know what I'm saying? Let it know to keep going. Subscribe to our channel. Go follow us on IG. You know what I'm saying? We coming. We yes. Coming. We coming, y'all. On IG, you can follow me at woman.withpower. Real underscore motivational underscore talk. We, we, hey, we your number one motivation speakers in the world, you know what I'm saying? And we coming. Peace, Peace up. Out. Eight time down. Yes, Eight sir. God first.